For centuries, mankind has been fascinated with realms outside of our conscious awareness. Through a series of interviews with practitioners, guest speakers, and experts, Liberate the podcast covers all that and more, from health and holistic healing to the supernatural. We aim to educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today I'm really excited because I'm bringing on one of my personal friends and people that had, he's he's just this magical being. He's a, <laughs> he, he's a wonderful comedian and actor, spiritual healer. He's He's been a little bit of a mentor and there for me during difficult times, and especially when the shop was in its baby infant stages, being one of our practitioners and healers here. And of course, now he's on to global ventures around the world with stand-up and acting and stuff like that. So, I mean, he's too big for us now but you <laughs> I'm know here, I'm here. <laughs> so I'm welcoming Samba and today we're going to be talking about forgiveness and inner child work which is I think a, a really strong foundation of of everybody having and being able to achieve happiness and live the life that they want is to go back and really look at those problems that once existed, heal and mend them and move forward. So I'm 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 excited about this. You know, yeah. Samba, welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here, Christina. This shop looks amazing. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Really. It's been transforming over it's the grown. years. It's grown, my God. It's beautiful. I remember when I was walking by the street once upon a time when I moved to this neighborhood five years ago six years ago and then I walked in and then I I kind of saw you and I was like okay hey I kind of do palm reading from time to time but I don't take it seriously and you're like you should come read my palm I was like yeah I don't know and so I, I, I walked around and I remember you coming outside and calling after me and being like just come in here please and then I read your palm and then you were like okay you're legit so ever since then I've just been so blown away by you know, you, your energy, what you've done with this store and how you're helping people in such a beautiful way. So thank Aww. you that I'm here. It's an honor. So d- tell everybody a little bit more about about you and about maybe like your your healing journey. And I mean, I know that we're talking about inner child and forgiveness work. And mm-hmm. uh, just right before we, we started this episode, you shared that that's been one of your, your journeys and the things that you've been going through a lot uh, since 2012. So. Definitely, definitely. No, I've been doing a lot of that kind of work. So when I was was asked to come today it was it was those were the two words that stuck out forgiveness and inner child because looking back at my life um, I've had to to work through that to be where I am today and still working through that so just a little bit about myself I uh, was born in Africa my mom's from Mauritania which is in West Africa my dad is Dutch and they met in the Sahara Desert and I was born there <laughs> and then uh, when I was two we moved to Ethiopia on the other side of Africa and I grew up there till I was 18. Uh, my parents were doing social work at the time. I went to like an international school. So from a very young age, I was very connected to different cultures, different nationalities, different kind of religions. And then when I was 18, moved to Holland to study and get my university degree. So I studied theater and then I started doing stand-up comedy and started acting and then um, lived there for 10 years. And then when I was 27, 28, I moved to LA and I've been here now six years. So there's been a whole journey of crossing the world and manifesting what I want in this life. In manifesting what you want, a couple things. Side Mm -hmm. note, his mom makes the best, um, most amazing (laughs) incense. There are these like incense balls that you burn on resin, but I don't know. They're like an aphrodisiac. They're like so good. Like people that they, when they smell them, they just can't stop smelling them. I mean, like, I mean, I'm telling you, anybody that has, uh, I've never seen somebody that hasn't had such an amazing <laughs> reaction. And I've never seen anybody have such a reaction to incense before. So throwing that out on a side note. Desert secrets. Yeah. But the thing mom. that I love about you, Samba, that I want to touch on is that you're constantly pushing yourself to achieve the next level. Okay, what he left out is he became a big fish before he moved to America. And he said, okay, well, I outgrew everything. I have everything. I have my own show. I have all this stuff here. Like, uh, let me play on a different level. And so the level that you came to play on was the Hollywood level, you know? And so it, 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 
you're constantly pushing yourself to that next plateau, mm -hmm. you know, in those goals and working through those issues so that you could have it. I try to. I mean, ever since I was a young child, I, I didn't want to settle for, for less. I knew I was different because um, uh, I grew up with a mother who was a Muslim, my father was Christian, a mom who was black, a dad who was white, um, half African, half European. So um, being in Africa, I was an outsider because I was half white. And being in Holland, I was an outsider because I was half black. So I always knew I didn't fit in. And so I knew my quest in this life would be to not have to fit in a certain mold, but to de define my own journey, however that would unfold. So I was very blessed to have uh, had a lot of spiritual uh, teachings when I was small. You know, my mom's a Muslim, my dad's a Christian, but they were very open to us kind of researching a lot of stuff. So I remember at a very young age already desiring to learn more and more and more about stuff. And, and I remember one of the first books I came across when I was a teenager was this book on uh, the mind by, I think, Betty Shine. It was this, this woman from England who was a, a psychic and she explained how the mind works and how you can uh, communicate with other people without being in the same room, that kind of stuff. So uh, that opened up my, my whole journey to, you know, having something, visualizing it and, and trying to achieve it in this life and challenge myself to achieve it. Um, and ever since then, I've just been learning and learning and learning and doing and doing and doing. I'm someone who makes goals. Like I write my five-year plan. I've always, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it this this year, but uh, for the past. Well, if it's a five-year plan, yeah. I mean, you should, you know, <laughs> it, you have five years to work on it. Right. I mean, so I mean, I think you're telling people that you do your five-year plan in one year, and then you reassess. I, I reassess. <laughs> I always reevaluate my year, how it's gone, if I'm still on track. So I've always been a goal writer setter. And, and doer. Uh, and trying to be a doer. Yes, I've achieved a lot of my goal lists. However, not all of them. But the, the thing I've had to deal with was uh, learning to accept that there's a certain difference or you have to find the right balance between setting a goal and wanting to achieve it and at the same time trusting life to give you what is best for you. Mm. And it's a very delicate tightrope you're walking because sometimes you don't get what you want. But the reason you get it is for a beautiful reason that will end up being something so much deeper that you yeah. actually really do want on a deeper level. So that has been one of the frustrations in my journey, but at the same time, the lessons that have opened my eyes. So yeah, when I was in Holland, I was very ambitious, very uh, eager to grow as a comedian, as an artist, as an actor. But I knew that I wanted more. And I, I, I always told myself in my five-year goals, by 2010, I'm moving to LA by 2010. I'm moving to LA. I did that since I was 18. I was like, by the time I'm 27, I'm moving to LA. And so before that, I wanted to achieve as much success as possible in Holland. And I was really fortunate to, to do that as a comedian and actor on TV with my own comedy specials. Um, and then 2010 came along and the opportunity came to move to LA. Um, and I remember that moment of, uh, I'll tell you that story in a second, but I didn't ma manage to move in 2010. I moved in 2011, January 2011. So I missed the deadline Aww. by one month, <laughs> but <laughs> I made it here. And yes, it was to grow and to challenge myself. But uh, coming back to the issue of trusting life. Um, so I was doing really well in Holland. I had a huge following. I was very successful as a comedian and um, uh, like I could take the next step to really blow up in Holland at another level. But at the same time, I, I was not happy. I wanted to work in English. I wanted to work with people who understood more my multicultural background because Dutch people are not as internationally oriented as people here um, in LA. So I had a decision to make. It was either to continue with my career in Holland and have the comfort and the money and the success or take a chance, a leap of faith and move to LA and lose everything and start from zero. Mm. And so that was one of the toughest decisions I've ever had to make in my life. I took a break. I, I went to Portugal. Like My uncle had a little apartment there. I stayed in some real, little village. And then uh, I remember having a conversation with a tree. <laughs> I was sitting <laughs> I by a tree and this old tree, olive tree was behind me. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to talk to you, buddy, because you seem like you've been through a few things. Um, and I asked questions and I would kind of get an answer in, in my heart and in my head. So one of the main things was, um, 
you know, like look at that blade of grass, right? If you see the grass, um, it's always trying to grow. It's always trying to maneuver itself towards the light, you know, come mm -hmm. out of the ground and grow. And if grass comes across an obstacle like a rock or something else in the ground, uh, the seed kind of finds a way to grow around it. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it always reaches its final destination. So by, by that kind of story, it was clear to me that um, I have an ambition to be as the best I can be. And no matter what obstacles are thrown in my life, um, life will always help you find a way around it to, in the end, get what you want. And so the simple answer was, should I come to America and leave everything behind? And the simple answer was, trust life. Mm. Basically, if you have a goal and if it feels right, like really synchronized, you know that feeling when everything, when you're about to make a choice and everything just feels aligned with that choice, that energy just feels right. As scary as it is, take that leap of faith because when that feeling is right, uh, life will find a way to support you mm. and guide you on that journey and get you there. And it was scary, don't get me wrong. A lot of people were unhappy when I said, I'm doing this and, you know, burning bridges and you'll never work here again and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> of course. And so it was terrifying. But my family said, you know what, if it feels right in your heart, go for it and we'll support you. Um, so I was very fortunate to have that and I took that leap of faith. I came here and here I am six years later and, um, you know, life has found a way to support me and I'm, I'm still here and I'm still doing my thing and having the little successes that I'm so grateful for. So... Yeah, if you have a goal and ambition uh, and it feels absolutely right, take that leap of faith and, and jump, jump, you know. And that connects to that inner child in you. You know, he wants to play or she wants to play. Listen to her, listen to him. Because that's, at the end of the day, the key to what will make you happy. Which, you know, what I'm thinking that popped into my head while you're saying that is is I know that you're talking about inner child work, but I was just the whole metaphor of that inner child when you said that. It's like kids, for the most part, with very few exceptions, they don't, they don't worry about how. They just have a goal or something in mind and they figure out a way. Mm -hmm. You know, there isn't this, I can't do this, or that's not going to work, or mom and dad aren't going to let me, or this or that. They're going to figure out a way. They're going to sneak out the window. They're going to try to create this most creative, elaborate story of convincing. They're going to go and wash cars, or they're going to go and sell lemonade. They're going to do whatever it takes, because when a no happens, they move around it, mm -hmm. like that blade of grass. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that childlike wonder and that inner child knows it can trust itself in some capacity i think that that's what that's all about right yeah. it's about building back that inner trust that of course you're going to be okay yeah you know if you built all of the success already you know if you come to a different country you're, you know already the steps to do it it's a different yeah it's a different environment but you, you know you already have that knowing and right. you'll find a way because you trust in you right and it comes back to that. I mean, I'll never forget uh, what you say. Um, like, um, I was, I think, five years old in Ethiopia. And I just remember being home, and I had to get my mom. She was at the market, and something was going on at home, like an emergency. And I had to get my mom. So I ran to our gate. There was this huge gate kind of closing off our house from the street. And it was locked, and I'm too small to get the lock, right? And I'm like, I have to get to my mom. So I looked at the gate, and I'm like, God, you know open that gate because I need to get to my mom and suddenly and I'm not lying this huge gush of wind blew and the gate kind of slowly creaked open and loosened so I could kind of squeeze my way through it and I managed to get my mom and that memory has always been with me because what you say the inner child has no doubts um, when they want something they 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 trust that they will get it as much as possible so uh, what I've realized um, you know living here in LA now and being a 34 year old man <laughs> is that um, we are, nowadays, it's hard to reconnect to that inner child. Um, I don't know if it's the energy of Los Angeles itself or just adulthood, but... Um, I think it's adulthood. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I you know, because I think, actually, I would say, knowing, you know, because I'm from the Midwest and I have people, you know, friends in different places and stuff like that, and I feel 
here more than anywhere, people are still connected. Mm. You know, like that they're not connected, but they are more connected right. because it's such a creative mm. vibe of finding that individuality, finding that expression. And it's almost like a city that I feel that doesn't grow up, mm. you know, in some way. Right. But there, then we struggle to find that true inner child, which is, mm -hmm. you know, so let's, let's hear a little bit about your struggles and so, your triumphs over the years. Yeah. So, uh, in 2012, I was determined to start my journey on forgiveness. Basically what I did was, um, I made a list of things I want to forgive myself for things I want to forgive other people for and I made a list and and that's the first step uh, to forgiveness because I think uh, by letting things go you can finally kind of breeze through life the way you're supposed to without holding yourself back and energy holding you back um, so I made a list of uh, things I wanted to forgive myself and things I wanted to forgive other people for for example uh, things I wanted to forgive myself where, uh, you know, for a long time I was really attached to this girl that I thought was the love of my life and that we'd end up together. Like, we had known each other when we were kids, but it was a love that never happened. And so for some reason I kept being drawn to this person, kept wanting to be with her, you know, put her on this pedestal. Or when I was a, a young kid, my parents had a near divorce, you know. Oh, that almost happened, but they managed to work it out. But that had affected me as a child. So um, as an adult, I realized I was... Uh, to always avoiding conflict or trying to run away from conflict. So I made it just a list of like things I wanted to forgive myself, things I wanted to forgive other people for, like for example, I had a noisy neighbor or a <laughs> friend of mine who, who would never be grateful for things I would do, you know, out of love or, or appreciation. So I made that list and then the next step was, okay, actually going through those things and going back in those memories to truly forgive them. So what I would do is I'd pick one thing, for example, with this girl, um, and I'd meditate and I'd go back to the, the inner child. So the Samba who was dealing with that person um, as a child in my meditations, and I'd connect with that child and, and ask it to, to like, I'd, I'd tell it, I forgive it, you know, I forgive you, and, and, and truly go through that memory and and see it for what it is and, and let it go, um, which is a, a harder step. The, the first hard step is making that list and being really honest with yourself. But the harder step is actually doing the forgiving. And what I realized by doing that work constantly, because you know forgiveness just doesn't happen in one go. It's like a wine stain on a carpet. You can wipe it off, but then sometimes if you don't do it right, it'll keep coming back. And so you have to wipe it off again and it'll keep coming back. So um, <laughs> just work, 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 work. And, and what I realized is that Everything stems from a seed that was planted at a certain point during your early childhood, at least for, in my case. So, uh, um, I think everybody. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Just, it's a seed, and it's, it's sometimes so minute. It's sometimes such a small thing. For example, with this girl, I realized what, what made me like regret or want her or you know, desire to be with her was that when I was 10... I, I wrote, or nine, I wrote her a little note, you know, because I had a crush on her. And in those days, it was cool as a guy to be, you know, tough, <laughs> you know, hard, hardcore. And so I wrote her a note saying, I don't like you anymore. And that really hurt her, right? I gave her this note and I remember her being in tears and saying, uh, you know, thank you, Samba. And kind of like, you know, being really hurt by that. And so that seed was what caused this whole forest to grow of desire and wanting and, you know, guilt and uh, wanting it to make up to her for that moment and for that pain. And so connecting to that seed and noticing it, seeing what it is and realizing, you know, it's, it can be forgiven from my point. Like, I can forgive myself for what I did. You know, I was a nine-year-old child who made this decision and this thing. Um, realizing what the seed is uh, and then seeing it for what it is, a seed. It's not a forest, it's a seed. And being able to forgive it and throw it out um, was what was starting to help me. And so everything stems from a seed that was planted as your inner child, which affects you still today. Um, you know, whether it's a lack of trusting other people, a lack of self-worth, uh, which are things I've had to, to look at and deal with. Because, you know, uh, like I said, I was always an outsider as a child. 
I was very tall, I was very skinny, so I was weird from the get-go. Like, it was hard for people to, <laughs> to place me in a category. <laughs> so that took a toll on my self-worth in the end. And, you know, um, wanting to be accepted by the people, wanting to be a people pleaser, all these things I would write down and notice that they're there. And this, I would just meditate to go back to the seed, like what planted that seed? And you come back to, it was one moment, a certain event or something someone said. And when you come back to that one moment, you can actually put all your energy in there to connect to that inner child at the time and go through that memory and forgive it and, and, mm -hmm. and forgive him or her. And then forgive yourself as an adult too and say, you know, today is a new day and I don't have to carry that with me. And by doing that constantly from 2012, like I remember 2012 was a major year doing a lot of that, I felt so much lighter and I felt like I dealt with a lot of... Uh, energies that were kind of holding me back or it's amazing how much tension we hold in our bodies that yeah. we're so unaware of and going through those meditations I could realize where they are and untangle them and let them go so I could so they could flow so that was the start of the work that I was doing which I you know when when I'm hearing you share this it's a uh, even as much as I've studied you know, and I've helped and I do healings and therapy, psychotherapy, all this different stuff, that there's an interesting thing. And I don't know if it's just like clicking in the right way or it's the metaphor of which that you used, uh, but it's resonating and I, it, 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 I want to go back to it because I think that it's so fundamental in having the awareness for the people that are listening, look at that attachments and needs, wants, and desires are often coming from a feeling of lack, rejection, or a necessity of, of needing to prove or whatnot, but the seed actually, like your desire, like yes, you, you could love this girl, yes, you could have desired and wanted something, but it came from that seed that you hurt her and you needed to make up with for it. Right? Mm -hmm. And so the desire to show that you weren't a bad guy, the desire to have all this, you know, like, I mean, really, if people can get this, you know, mm -hmm. this is a whole different way of looking at attachments. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, it is and it isn't, you know, like it's around there. But I mean, in the way that you said it hits in a way that I think people can see it a little bit clearer than I right. think it's often described. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so you're going back to these little seeds. Yeah. And like in going there, releasing that seed, did you instantaneously like release that, yeah, that absolutely. desire? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I remember, for example, with this girl, when I realized that was the core issue, that's the seed that was planted that created this forest in front of me, I felt so much happier. And by forgiving myself as an inner child, and forgiving myself now as an adult for carrying it around for so long, I it became so clear to me why um, I was so attached to her. There was this desire to prove myself to her. And by being aware of that, all of a sudden, I could let go of the attaching, attachment feeling. And by forgiving myself, I could move on finally. And it's hard, you know, to, to ask forgiveness from other people because that's up to them if they want to or not. But you have the power to forgive yourself. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't need her forgiveness. Of course, I sent her a text and said, you know, I'm sorry if I've ever hurt you. And I realized that um, I carry this energy with me. So I explained it to her. And for her, it could be something that she doesn't carry around or she yeah, doesn't she have. Might not she even, might not even be aware of that. She's she like, might oh, not what? even remember you this. You sent me a note? <laughs> exactly. But for me, it's something that I've been carrying for so long. So the power of others forgiving you is not in your hands, but... Um, you forgiving yourself and taking those steps is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's linked to attachment. It's linked to, you know, like I said, the feelings of self-worth or being a people pleaser or um, uh, your self-confidence. Everything is linked to these moments that affected you as a child and that you carry with you in your inner child. And um, honoring that, forgiving that, is the first step, I think, to, to truly being free and letting your inner child be who they're meant to be. 
um, because this is the next thing is I uh, by b doing that work I realized yes everyone has an inner child and yes everyone it, I see everyone having three things it's an inner child who they are now and an elder mm -hmm. I see people having three of those levels an elder or a wise person or inner goddess or inner god um, and so when you're able to realize that people function from those three uh, areas at different times in their lives uh, you have more fun um, you are able to to enjoy living more I think <laughs> because I think really the key to being a happier and more complete person and having a happy relationship is to always recognize the inner child in someone else mm. and always see see it um, I've been married now a year and a half and I, I never stop to see the little girl that my wife is, even though she's a grown-up woman. <laughs> um, I still see that inner child and I appeal, I, I want to keep appealing to that inner child. Um, I want to keep being playful, I want to keep being um, joyful and, and letting there be room for silliness and humor and laughing at yourself. because. I truly feel that connecting to that inner child and seeing it in other people creates a more harmonious relationship and you are able to see people better. Whether it's people who are in pain or people who are just enjoying life, the inner child is always going to be there. Okay, so let's take mm. this in because this whole concept might be a little abstract for some of our listeners. Right. So what do you mean when you say inner child and viewing it as an inner child? I get you, but let's yeah. just let, let's just go in and explain right. it a little bit differently. Well, basically, if, uh, if I'm looking at you now, um, I try to see little Christina when she was eight or nine. <laughs> yes, and, uh, I'm not, I, don't, I don't mean you have to act like eight or nine-year-old Christina. I just mean that um, by trying to see the 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 youth, the the the, the yeah, the, the the innocence, the the playfulness, the joy, the 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 yeah, the I think more than anything, the the desire to live and to live fully and lovingly and and laughingly and um, carelessly, that side of someone is the inner child to me and being alive to it and being able to see it and encourage it I think is key to creating a joyful existence for yourself but for the other people as well so yes I'm a comedian so I try to always laugh at myself and I do um, and I think that's very important to to be able to laugh at yourself because life is hard and mm -hmm. we're never gonna get it absolutely right and we're never gonna be fully free of struggle or challenges or obstacles they're always going to be there but we do have the power to try to take a step back and trust life that these things are happening for a greater reason and a greater purpose no matter how hard they seem and to trust your inner joy and giddiness and love and light to shine through it and try to encourage it to shine through it okay and what about what about does it also on the on the event that the person that you're looking at or seeing is kind of more crabby, a little bit more negative, pessimistic, or um, maybe having quote unquote bad behaviors? Mm. Does viewing them as an inner as is their inner child kind of you know because when I see people in that stage, I I I personally when I look at people and see that. I don't call it inner child, but I say, you know, we are all souls, we are all evolving, we are all growing. Mm -hmm. Evolution involves time, process, and lots of mistakes, right? Yeah. You know, and so that no matter where somebody's at, to see that they're in this evolution, right? Yeah. And seeing somebody as a as as their inner child also allows you to have like compassion for whatever stage they're at, and almost like you know when you see a little kid, yeah. you see like bad behavior. They're, they're learning. Yeah. Like it's not like okay, they're not evil. They're they're learning. You yeah. know, and so it's almost like a you don't judge kids for their their mistakes or their mischievous. Um, you know, you might say that that's wrong and try to teach them a different way right. 
but there isn't an inherent, they're not bad, they're not wrong, they might be misguided, they yeah. might have to learn some lessons still, but you don't automatically throw them in a cage and right. say, you know, they're bad, you know? Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. Um, so that was remember, what was coming through when you No, I shared. remember uh, my sister, uh, she she was married before, and her ex-husband was, was uh, what a terrible man. Really, he hurt her really badly, and... I uh, remember when they were getting divorced, um, I stepped in to be her spokesperson, you know, to communicate with him and kind of take care of everything for her. But he was so horrible all the time on the phone. And I kept getting these bursts of anger to when I'd communicate with him because of how he hurt my sister. So I knew it was coming from a place of protection. But at the same time, I think this is one of my, you can see it as a weakness or a strength, but one of the things that... that that I have is that I always try to see the good in people, no matter how terrible they are. And and this person is honestly one of the, uh, you know, meanest people I've come across in my life uh, so far, <laughs> and uh, at that time anyway. And so dealing with them, I tried to see the good in them. And by seeing the good in them, I mean, like you say, I tried to see that they are a soul. They are... Uh, uh, on this evolutionary track, they are growing, they are developing, they are going through what they need to go through to learn the lessons they need to learn to be the brightest they can be. Um, and so it was, it was, it was that that kept me uh, functional and being able to communicate with this person. Because every time that I'd escalate to the emotional side of it, um, I'd try to go back to seeing them as. Um, a person having to learn something in this in this time. So not as a bad person that I'd punish forever, but I tried to keep seeing the good in them. And what helped me try to see the good in them was by trying to see this image of of this, this them being a turbulent child. Mm. Um, and because because at the end of the day, like I was bullied, for example, as a teenager because I was such a I looked like such an outsider, but. Um, it was, even though the bully was big in my mind, it was still a turbulent child to me, um, looking back. So no matter how dark someone seems to be or uh, turbulent or what they're going through, by seeing them as this, this, and not condescendingly seeing them as a child, that's not what I mean. It's by seeing these energies that they're, uh, reacting to because of something they had gone through when they were younger, something that they had experienced, a seed that was planted in them that they haven't dealt with yet. Um, and what helps is to realize that everyone is on a journey of learning. And and I think that the only way that, um, for example, my sister's ex-husband can get out of that is by doing the forgiveness work and mm. we being willing to connect to whatever made them be the way they are whatever seeds were planted that made them the way they are because we're not born turbulent I really don't believe that people are born evil or you yeah, know mean no. um, it's not a genetic thing I really dis disbelieve that I don't want to believe that it's inherited I really believe that it's all implanted in our youth mm-hmm and through scars and things yeah. that, you know, seeds that we haven't been able to forgive or or strong suits or different things that we're wearing over mm -hmm. time, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So in 2012, you decided to go on this, this journey of tremendous self-forgiveness, outside forgiveness, and examining and bringing back little Samba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what was the catalyst to get you to that place? What, what was it that, you know, was there a call to action that you had or was it just, you know, you, you, you just, you know, what was it that got you to do that? I wonder, I mean, um, I'd been in LA for two years at that time. I'd just broken up with uh, a girlfriend that I was with. Uh, my mother was, had just been diagnosed with cancer at that time and, we worked together to kind of help her recover and heal. So I was coming back from all that energy going on. And then, of course, 2012, at that time, I was very um, invested spiritually in, in like what's going on in the world. And, uh, you know, it was with the Mayan calendar, like, energies that were going on and everything. So I was like, this, this is a year. It just felt right to 
figure myself out. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'd been here, yes, and, and I'd gone through these experiences, you know, my mom with cancer, breaking up. Um, so I knew I had to kind of readjust myself and really get back in touch with myself after dealing with those emotional things. Um, and so I don't know what made me make that list, but um, I knew something had to happen inside me to move forward in a brighter way. Um, I felt like I could be more and I felt like inside there were there was unresolved issues. You know, it's like a slow boil mm. of water that had been built boiling for years and finally it was coming to that point where, okay, it's about to start boiling. So I knew I had to do something and I I I knew I hadn't I hadn't faced certain things from my past that I was like why not now mm. um, what do I have to lose you know life is short and I don't want to spend the rest of it regretting or uh, what ifing or um, lacking or hiding or yeah. uh, you know being afraid so that I think is what pushed me to make that list um, and it's never too late to start and like I said it asks because it asks for a lot of courage it does but th- that step alone, the, the first step, making that list of what you want to forgive yourself for and what you want to forgive other people for, that alone is a courageous act and um, it's a great start. Yeah. The work comes in the actual forgiving, but just making that list and being aware of the things you are carrying with you, that, or, that alone is a huge start. So, I, yeah, I encourage it and um, it helped me definitely um, um, in, in, in who I am today. And... I love I love the way that you know you said okay why not why not now mm-hmm. you know and I think for those that are listening is is we all have these goals whether we sit and write them down it is is it in such a way that you do and <laughs> and, and and stick to those and and you know our um uh but we have like we all have a, a an image of where we want to go and how our life could be better in some way shape or form and even the person that might have the best life they can say that there's all, always more they can do learn and grow you know and i love that you know what you're sharing it which is so true and i hope that it resonates is that in order to change the outside you got to change the inside mm-hmm. you know and life is really short so it doesn't matter whether somebody's listening and you're you know still a teenager you're in your 20s you're in your 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s 80s it doesn't matter no that you the moment to change can be now Mm -hmm. and then you have your rest of your life however long short whatever that is it doesn't matter yeah but why wait till tomorrow to do what can be done today? Yeah. And what is what is it that people have to lose? Yeah, exactly. You know? And that's the thing. As scary as it seems to make that list, you have nothing to lose. Actually, Absolutely. you have everything to lose by not making it. Yeah, list. I, yes, that's exactly it. So it's not... Um, it's work, yes, but trust me, it's, it's such important work. And... Um, I really believe that that's the key to to being just even having peace in your body yeah. and peace in your mind and peace in your heart. That is just so important um, to not be carrying this weight around you, this heavy cloak and layers of clothes that you've been putting on since since childhood. You know that all is just a seed. It's as innocent as this little seed, and um, getting to that core. And, and recognizing it for what it is and letting it go, I truly believe. And, and uh, that's the key to, to yes, your self-happiness, but also relationships, happiness in relationships, happiness in family relationships, happily, you know, in, in marriage relationships, in, 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 in girlfriend-boyfriend relationships. I think um, that and recognizing the playfulness that you have in you, that you're born with, you're naturally born a playful being. Like, you're, mm-hmm. this life is supposed to be a game. At the end of the day, it's supposed to be fun. And the only person who can make it fun is you, for yeah. yourself. So that's what I mean by inner child, is that desire that we had coming into this world to shine, to be bright, to play, to experience, to love, to be hurt, to 
feel all these emotions and still be able to get up and and go for what we want and enjoy it that energy is what I try to appeal to and, and talk about is uh, or refer to through the inner child nice yeah play people play <laughs> so if you had a if you had to leave everybody with one thing what would it be whoa that's a big one um <clears throat> I would say trust life because uh like I said there's always going to be obstacles there's always going to be moments that you feel you failed or that you're not good enough or um that you're not worthy, but uh, don't be so hard on yourself, really don't, because um, we're all trying, and life is about trying and living, so please don't be hard on yourself, be gentle on yourself, be gentle on your body, be gentle on your soul, and play, really trust life will take you where you need to go when the energy feels right, if you know you want something, and with all your being, it feels right to go for it. Take that leap of faith, mm-hmm. and life will support you. It's what happened to me. I'm a living proof of that. A kid who grew up in a- Africa, in Ethiopia, and now in Los Angeles. <laughs> it happened to me, and it can happen to you. I'm not special. I'm not different than you are. Just be gentle on yourself and trust life. Aww. Thank you so much. No worries. So really. much wisdom in this one, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just, uh, it was fun to be back. And yeah, you know, I, I love helping people. And whether it's through palm reading or healing or... Um, wisdom, words of wisdom. <laughs> I think this is going to be helping lots of people. I hope so. Where can people find you or search, uh, see some of your work and different things like that? So my full name is Samba Shoot, S-A-M-B-A-S-C-H-U-T-T-E. And I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, and I'm on YouTube. So just join me and uh, I'll, I'm here. Yeah, and you gotta you gotta hear some of his comedy sometime. <laughs> so he's shooting out all the spiritual wisdom, but he'll also make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Play, 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 and laugh and have fun <laughs> and awaken your inner child. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Christina. Um, and if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a comment, a comment, combat, combat, a combat, combat, a combat, combat comment. comment. <laughs> uh, leave us a comment uh, um, and rate us. Uh, if you leave a written comment, um, it helps people find us a little bit better because uh, I, iTunes does this thing where they rate you by how many comments you have and stuff like that not necessarily always the listeners so if you take a couple minutes five stars great a little comment would be even better and until next time thank you